Hey guys, welcome back. For those of you who may have missed a few episodes, we are no longer in Panama. We are in McQueen, Texas, and I am here all by my lonesome because Kurt went to Mexico. We found a boat there and she is under contract, y'all. And one of the contingencies is to go give her a visual inspection. So he left as soon as he got here to go and do that. Unfortunately, I couldn't go with him this time. I took off a little bit too much time for the move last week. So I'm actually on the sidelines with you, anticipating and waiting for Kurt to get back to us and let us know if we are one step closer to finding our new home. off to go look at our boat. I love you. I love you. See you in two days. seems like I have been traveling non-stop and that's probably because I have been. We went straight from a move from Bocas del Toro, Panama to Florida, driving from Florida to Texas, unpacking and getting settled in in Texas and then I packed my things up and came straight to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Actually Nuevo Vallarta which is a little bit northwest of Puerto Vallarta. And my initial thoughts on Puerto Vallarta slash Nuevo Vallarta. It's a beautiful place. It's, uh, it's pretty Americanized. It's not like Panama. Uh, they actually have a Home Depot here. So <laughs> I was excited about that. And so tomorrow the seller's broker is going to pick me up here at the apartment and take me over to meet the sellers. And we're gonna go to the marina and see the boat. Our search for a catamaran has been refined to a few different models. Actually, they have certain characteristics that we're looking for in a catamaran. One, that's ruggedness and safety. We want a boat that's gonna safely take us across the oceans. Two, we don't mind sacrificing a bit of comfort for performance. Although we're not looking for a straight out performance boat, it doesn't hurt to have a little more speed than comfort. Three, livability. We are going to be living on this boat, so we need a design that's going to be very easy to live on. And four, of course, there's always the budget to consider. We don't have an unlimited budget, so we are looking for something that we can get a good value for our dollar. With those features in mind, we seem to refine our search to a Katana 431. And we searched far and wide for a Katana 431. We put in offers on several boats, but it seemed like we were always a day late and a dollar short. We never got our offer accepted. But through that search, we found a Katana broker named Don Buckles, who's been selling Katanas for decades and has a wealth of knowledge. He's sold most of these Katanas originally and knows many of the boats. And through Don, we were able to find the boat that we put the contract on. It was a Katana 471 in Nueva Vallarta. 
The design of a Katana 471 is practically identical to a 431. The reason we had been focusing on the 431 is budget and size. It's a little easier to manage with just the two of us, and budget-wise, of course, they're a little bit less expensive being a smaller boat. However, this particular boat is a beautiful boat. It's still within our budget, although we're pushing it, and we decided that we would give it a shot and come try the 471. So I wanted to go over some of the pros and cons with you on the Katana 471. Katanas in general are known for quality construction. They're very well-built boats. They're on the spectrum of performance boat, yet they're not the lightest, fastest boat out there. They still are cruising boats, but they are known to be faster than your average production cruiser. They're also very rugged. That was something that was important to us, uh, you know, in, as far as safety goes. The hulls are built with uh, Tuaron, which is a Kevlar type of product, so the hulls are very strong. These boats are claimed to be unsinkable. The rigging is heavier than uh, your normal uh, productions in catamaran, so it has some, some very nice safety features. The 471 is known to be one of Katana's best designs, and they're very sought after. They're almost like a, say for instance, a 65 Mustang or 68 Camaro. It's one of those designs that is classic, and so now that the depreciation has taken its course over the years, these boats are actually have the ability to start raising in value. However, that same pro can also be a con. It is a much older boat. This is a boat that is 20 plus years old. Therefore, you're going to be encountering problems that you're going to find on a 20 plus year old boat. So that is a con that we have to deal with. The other con to a 471 is it is big. It's big and big means expensive. As boats get larger, they get ex exponentially more expensive with marina costs, with bottom paint, with everything. Everything's oversized, everything's bigger. Lots of costs are based on your footage of your boat. So this will be a more expensive boat to maintain. It will be a little more uh, difficult to handle, just the two of us. However, I feel confident that we can take it on and the benefit to having a bigger boat is we've got room for more guests. So, you know, maybe we can get some of you guys out there on this boat. Uh, one last feature of the 471 that is hotly debated is the helm stations. These can be considered a pro or a con. The helm stations, there's twin helms, they're both aft and outboard and very exposed to the weather. The advantages are you get a really nice sailing feel, a feel of a monohull on a big catamaran. You have great visibility of your sail trim. You have great visibility down the hulls. The downside is you are exposed to the weather. And so there's lots of people that that's a deal breaker. Lots of people hate them. Lots of people love them. I'm personally looking forward to sailing with the aft helms. So for me, it was not an issue. I have been patiently waiting all day for Kurt to message me and tell me about the boat. I know he went earlier today to meet with the owners of the boat and they were going to give him a tour and he was supposed to message me and let me know when he was done and um, that was several hours ago and I'm working right now. I'm just outside taking a break but I cannot think about anything else except that boat. We have a Zoom call scheduled tonight. Uh, when he gets back to tell me everything. So I hope it's good. Fingers crossed. So let me tell you about this boat. 
This is a beautiful example of a Katana 471. I'm here because we put an offer on this boat sight unseen. Uh, like I told you, the Katana market is hot. We had to get an offer on this boat in to lock it down. And then I had a contingency for a visual inspection to make sure that the boat was everything it was supposed to be. And that's why I came down here was to do step one, look at the boat and make sure it's what I wanted. And it is. Every Katana is a bit semi-custom and this one is no exception. This was built originally for a Peruvian and he had a few custom design options put in, including a custom guest bath and a custom seating area in the salon. And so I needed to make sure that these things were gonna fit for my lifestyle and that they weren't gonna be something that, that detracted from the boat. But I love it. It's a beautiful boat and it is a big boat. It's been well taken care of. I'm no expert, I am not a professional surveyor, so of course I just did a, a cursory view, but that's where step two comes in. We will have a professional surveyor come and check out the boat next. And so I'm trying to get that date locked down when he's, uh, when he's going to be here, but we will take a second trip and come with the professionals to look at this boat. And next time, hopefully Linda can get here so that she can enjoy this beautiful pool and the beautiful city of Nuevo Vallarta. And now that I've got all this hard work done and out of the way, I still have some time here in Mexico, so I'm gonna go explore, see what the town's got to offer, see if I can find a beach and maybe a margarita. It's a beautiful day here on the Nuevo Vallarta beaches, but there's not that many people out here. I think that that's probably because school has started in the U.S. and so I think the tourism season here is pretty much done. There's a handful of people on the beach, but it's really quiet for such a beautiful day. The waves are a bit rough today though, so they have the red flags out. It's not often that I'm out here that I don't hear a weed eater, a lawnmower, a blower, a clipper, because the landscaping here is impeccable. Just look at this shrub behind me. That is magnificent. And that is something that has always been on my bucket list, is to have some shrubs that are that healthy, hardy, and big that I could actually shape it and <laughs> clip it like that. All right, guys. I'm about to get the call, I'm about to find out all about this boat. I'm like pacing back and forth in the kitchen because Kurt is a very particular kind of guy. So if that boat did not look good, then that's it. We can't continue on. So hopefully this call will be good. Oh, he's calling. How are you? I'm good. Tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> And the boat is beautiful. It looks just like the pictures. So, yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a catfish. No, it wasn't a catfish. <laughs> So there you have it guys. We haven't shown you the countless days and time that we have spent looking at boats and we haven't shown you guys the depressing defeat of being denied contract after contract because we haven't been fast enough yet. It is a seller's market out there and we just haven't been able to keep up. So the fact that we found a boat, she's in great condition. We were able to put her under contract and go see her. I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but I think we've got a pretty good feeling about this one. So make sure that you guys hit like, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for next week when we go to Mexico to do basically the most important part about buying a boat and that is the survey and the sea trial. See you guys next week. Thank <music> you.